by me, I'm in my pyjamas, but I thought I'd do a come with me review, but a little bit differently because the film I will be reviewing today is a screener. So I have managed to get my hands on a Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 screener. Who I've got to thank for this is the team behind the movie because I tweeted out to see if any of my followers knew how to get a screener and um, after like a day or so the composer of the movie and the writer had reached out and said look we really want to give you a screener we think we you'll really dig the movie. Our director is the person who sorts out the screeners and he's currently in LA doing premieres and whatnot so as soon as he's back we'll send you a screener. And they did. So they stayed in contact the whole time. I've been chatting with the team. They are all super duper lovely. Um, I also found out that the director and the lead actor live or used to live really close to where I live. So yeah, we've been like chatting away and it's been really fun. And they kept to their word. As soon as he got back to LA, they emailed me straight away with a screener. So I'm going to review it today for you guys. Um, I am... I'm hesitant because I really didn't like the original and um, like I hated it and you know the team know that this did not go down well with audiences at all but there's a bigger budget here there's a writer on board who I really enjoy Matt Leslie he has a movie called Summer of 84 which stars who's that guy from the babysitter Judah Lewis I really enjoy him and um I liked that movie so I'm hopeful for what we're about to see I will come back to you later and tell you what I thought Okay, so I am just waiting to go into work. Hopefully I'll get all my thoughts done before I have to go in. Otherwise I might have to cut again. But anyway, I have a lot of thoughts about this movie so let's discuss them as always i'll do the positive stuff first and then i'll move into any mixed or negative that i may have so right off the bat the first thing i noticed is that they've really listened to the critics and the audience based on the first film and paid attention to the critics that they had and improved them right off the bat the first thing that we get is like a little um animated sort of montage you think which is something from the first movie that people really liked so I was glad to see another one of those and it was really fun. It was all designed really well and it had like a lot of exposition to give us at the start and it done it in like a cool, digestible and more fun way than just, you know, talking at us. So I really enjoyed that. Um, hopefully that's something they incorporate in all of their movies because it's a nice fun element and it really works. My next favourite thing about this film was actually the lead character, the actor. His name is Scott and he is a really, really cool guy and I really enjoyed his performance here. It was far better than anything I was expecting. He does have some acting credits, um, but you know, from smaller movies like this, um, the performances normally worry me. His performance was amazing. The script demands quite a lot from him as it plays out um, and he has to give a really emotional turn and I think he succeeded in that. I really, really liked him. And I'm sure they'll keep um, utilising his character. He does play Christopher Robin after all. So I'm really excited to see more of him and his arc in this franchise. Speaking of arcs, the main criticism of, this, of the first movie was the story. It was not good. It was just really, really subpar. The dialogue was bad. The plot was... There wasn't really a plot, right? So this time we have um, Matt Leslie on board. As I said in the intro, he is a writer. He has worked on Summer of 84, something I really enjoy. So what I liked about it is that there was a proper story. There was character development, there was plot development, and it actually gave us something tangible as opposed to just being, you know, a bit of carnage. And the story was really deep and... Yeah, just something to really sink your teeth into. I think that pretty much covers it. Obviously, this is a horror movie, so I am thrilled to tell you that it does deliver in terms of horror, carnage, slasher. There is kind of not as many kills as I was hoping for, um, but it does kind of bent bookmark them. So the start is really gnarly. It's got a really fun opening that is 
really gory really gruesome lots of like practical gore and stuff that i really liked and then similarly the last kind of 15 to 20 minutes of this thing has the best horror of the whole film that is, that's how it is you know that's how it is with horror films i've said that a couple of times now about like immaculate and things like that the final act is where things tend to kick off and i don't mind that as long as what gets us there is entertaining enough so any horror that is included i really liked um the creature character design of Pooh and Tigger and everything is so much better than it was in the first movie. You can tell that a large portion of the budget has gone towards making them look better. They do look scary and it doesn't just feel like it's an actor wearing a Winnie the Pooh mask anymore. It's actually like embedded into them if you catch my drift. Like Tigger has a tail that looks quite real and um, Pooh's got like the sharp bare teeth. Tigger has like the claws for like scratching his victims. There's the villains are a lot better like design and they utilize what they've got in their kills. So I really enjoyed it for that aspect. And that is where this thing is at its most unique. Just the characters that we're using here for horror. And it works. It undeniably works. So yeah, in general, like all of the filmmaking on show here is miles 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 better than the filmmaking on display in the first one there's a proper tangible story there's really good performances it's not just the lead and um, playing christopher robin i thought everyone was pretty good you know they were none of them stood out as being bad the character design for the villains is fantastic the kills were really gnarly there's this one scene towards the end set at a rave that I had so much fun with, like just that setting for um, our slasher villains to come in. It's, it was just super fun. I really liked it. The score is something I forgot to mention as well. The score is really, really good. Um, it's your, you know, your general horror affair, but it matches the tone of the movie really well. It's amped up when it needs to be. It's quieter when it needs to be. And yeah, it supports the movie just fine. So I, I'm sounding like I loved it right now and whilst I didn't love it it's still like a middle of the road sort of slasher it's not you know fantastic amazing for what it's managed to do compared to the first one I think it has to be commended so let me get into like my mixed slash negative to give you more of an impression of why I haven't got this rated super duper high as I said there is a proper focus on story here and I feel like the focus is on that more so than anything else. And at times this movie does have boring stretches. There was a monologue in here that didn't particularly capture my attention for the whole time it was playing out. It was a little bit long for my taste. I don't think the dialogue being delivered was intriguing enough to last that long. And it gets a little bit repetitive and it is predictable. So a lot of the story playing out, you kind of are expecting. So I've just seen a massive spider. <laughs> coming down my mirror inside uh, no thank you <laughs> anyway yeah um it's not the most intriguing story like i said i'm glad we have one it's nice to sink your teeth into but it does kind of leave its horror to one side to focus more on its story which is a blessing and a curse this is more of a mixed thing than a negative but it is boring in places i do feel like a lot of general viewers will be turned off by the story Another criticism that I had of the first movie that I still have here is that it takes itself so freaking seriously. Like, it's Winnie the Pooh horror. It's Winnie the Pooh slasher. Why is it not more fun? Admittedly, there are a couple of jokes in here, but I don't know if they were supposed to be. I was kind of laughing along just at how silly it was, I think. Maybe it was intended. I'd like to think it was. But yeah, like... I feel like you can be dark and fun at the same time. Look at any other horror comedy, like Lisa Frankenstein, for an example. Not a perfect movie, but balances its darkness. And it is freaking dark with its comedy and light colours and energy really, really well. I would love to see the Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey franchise be a bit more tongue in cheek, be a bit more fun. On paper, this is a really stupid, silly, fun idea. So I feel like it really needs to tap into that. But this thing is as serious as it gets. It's all about like, um, I don't want to spoil the story actually, I want to let you discover that for yourselves, but the approach it takes is really emotional. It even has like some heartbreaking moments, it tries to like tug on your heartstrings in places. And whilst it does often work, I don't know if that's why we're here. I don't know if that's why we're here to see Winnie the Pooh in a slasher movie. I don't, 
there's not like massive negatives here i'm just quite mixed on those aspects um hopefully the Pooniverse, as they're calling it um leans into its fun a little bit more in later installments anyway um to summarize winnie the pooh blood and honey 2 is a massive improvement on the first one in character in story in horror in costuming in practical effects and i always love seeing practical effects but sometimes i think the story takes precedence over the horror which is the reason why we're here um, it's also a bit too negative. I'd like it to have a lot more fun. So I think I'm like in the middle at the moment. I'm kind of between a 2.5 out of 5 and 3 out of 5. Once I write my in-depth review, I will kind of come back with a score and you'll see that on my letterbox. Thank you for joining me. All my links to my socials and my written reviews are always down below. I have a link tree in my description that's got, you know, my Instagram, Twitter, letterbox, my reviews, all of that fun stuff definitely like comment subscribe all that fun stuff if you've managed to see the movie let me know down below what you thought and if you haven't seen it yet i'd love to know if you're interested to watch it take care guys and i'll see you in the next one bye